Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button, and I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 79 of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. Well, just like it always goes, it doesn't always go the way you plan. Um, I've hardly touched the base. I've, I've got to do, I'm still working on the Scotia. It's going great, but I just, I've, as we work forward, this larger piece of stone weighs four tons. I've got, I don't know if I can splice in video here to show you what I've got and what I don't have, because um, I've done some other B-roll to try to feed in. I've got a 10 ton hoist on my crane, and I got a three ton hoist on my crane. So I can use one to pick up and the other one to manipulate. So I don't have to physically try to pick something up or push something over, you know, or get under a stone because that's dangerous. You don't want to do that. You know, these straps are supposed to be great for a lot more weight and everything's, nothing's supposed to go wrong. But if you're underneath something that weighs a few tons and anything goes wrong, you lose. So I've been trying to figure this out because my three ton hoist is rated at three tons and it's a safety hoist it's clutched at three tons means it'll go to three tons and then it'll it'll slip it won't pick up anymore and so i don't know if i pick this four ton stone up and try to manipulate it with my three ton hoist if it will actually pick it up and swing it around if it'll be if it'll be handling four tons of weight by virtue of it, of it pulling and, and moving the stone um, or not and so I, I can't risk it I can't have four tons of stone in the air snag between two hoists and then what do I do you can't just call Superman because they're in you know you're gonna figure it out so I got to look in I found a, an appropriate geared trolley it's actually a, 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 a 12 ton unit it had two six ton trolleys ganged together so one's a push trolley and one's a geared trolley and uh, so I used the geared trolley and I found a five ton hoist, both within budget. They were, you know, the whole, the, I didn't even spend, I don't think spent, well, 207, $370 for all of it, which is a smoking deal. Um, but uh, it took some driving, had to go pick stuff up. And so um, then we were, I've got to cut a new plate to hang the hoist on that six ton trolley because the plate that's on it is for two hoists and it's just one project leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. So didn't have any one inch plate left, went and got some plate, started cutting it out, milling machine. Um, I'm not an electrician, tell you that right now. And uh, VFD was running along great and something, I don't know what's wrong with it. It don't work anymore. So called up my buddy next door and he's gonna, uh, help me mill the holes out so I can hang this extra hoist. Uh, and then we'll be able to turn this safely because we'll have a five ton, we'll have two hoists that are well within capacity to do this. And um, I'll probably take the 10 ton hoist off and put it away after we're done. I'll take one of the trolleys down and, and probably the six ton hoist, the six ton trolley and 10 ton hoist down because they're overkill. The 10 ton works great, but it's really slow. So if I have a five ton and a three ton of that, should that handle everything I've ever done in the studio up until this point, you know, the outside work, we get bigger cranes to come. But, uh, and uh, so we also had to rework the clay a little bit. We got uh, photographs from the patron. I offered to do a likeness, not a family portrait, but not a portrait, but a family likeness. And uh, have been trying to get this straightened out with indoor light and outdoor light, worked on it some inside, and and been trying to work on it different different types of light get it pretty close um, i wanted to have it cast by now it hasn't happened um, it's just the way things go and uh so um and then we've got some things coming up with family and plans and travel and so uh <laughs> everything gets dragged out uh, and uh, you, you may notice a, a bunch of noise in the background that sounds like mass destruction is going on. Um, I've been very blessed for the last over 20 years, all the time we've been in this building, uh, to have a pasture full of beef cattle next door. Well, they're going to grow houses there now instead of growing cows. So they're pushing down an old dormitory building that was there for migrant workers. 
and uh, crashing and smashing and making a mess and lots of noise. So uh, whether this is going to, you know, be a lot of noise in the background of my videos for the next year or two, it may. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, um, just kind of wanted to bring a little bit in. I, I don't want to. This isn't supposed to be a blog. Okay, this is not supposed to be a blog. People get frustrated because I'm not putting videos out every couple days. Uh, and they, they ask questions or call up and say, hey, man, where you been? We were looking and you didn't put anything out. This is real life, you know. I'm, I'm not, the after all these are put up, they'll be right there just like the, the current 78 videos are there just as fast as you want to watch them. It took me a year to produce those, to get enough content that was different to produce them. So I don't want to be redundant and just show you me cutting scotias all day long because I already did some videos on that. So I'll finish that up. I'm going to get her wrapped up, working on the crane. I'm going to get that hung up. Like I said, I don't want to get into too much of the, of the crane and everything because there's too many people doing goofy stuff that they said they watched a video on eBay, on YouTube, and now they know how to do it, okay? When you're picking up a four-ton stone and turning it two or three times, I mean, we've got to pick this stone up. I've got to turn it over to do a whole bunch of work on it first. And then I'm gonna to have to probably stand it up to finish it as far as the carving goes. And I'm probably also gonna to have to do work on it, laying down on the face, whether I'll do that before or after I finish it, whichever, but we'll just, we'll have to turn it and lay it down, you know, work on the, work on the front first, flip it over, work on the front, then probably flip it over, work on the back, then probably stand it up and do all the work to finish her up and get her nice. We're going to have to lay it down, crate it up, put it on the truck, all of this stuff. So i got to pick this stone up and down multiple times. I want to have safe equipment to do it with. Um, and I'm not going to run a tutorial on how to run a crane on this. This is That's like, you know, somebody showing you a video on how to do brain surgery or something on yourself. Just hey, don't do it, dude. Um, I've got to be able to handle this safe. So I'll get the crane sorted out. You get all that done and uh there's been no great issues it's just it takes time you know and so all these projects you know it's nice to be able to do it yourself um but then when things don't all work you know my bandsaw cut the metal off fine a big plate of steel and cut it off fine but i started milled out had to mill out some tooling to hold stuff down to do it no problems got it all done and i don't know what's going on so so uh and at this point, I just got to get a friend to fix it and, and uh, spend some money, which I hate to do. And uh, then we'll be able to hang that crane, hang that hoist and trolley on the crane and get to work moving stuff around. So um, we'll just see how it goes. Hang around. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to take the lazy route instead of trying to do a bunch of fancy editing. I've got a... The far one is a 10 ton hoist on a five ton trolley, and this is a three ton hoist on a gear. They're both on geared trolleys. They both have chains that I pull to run them back and forth. Now the difference between these, and there's a little bit of education, um, the orange one is what's considered to be a low headroom trolley, and sometimes they call them an army trolley or hoist. And the trolley is actually set high the hoist is set high on the on the trolley it doesn't have the hook to hang it and so it can save you um a foot or two because you can see the difference between that hoist and the one next to it where it hangs on a hook that hangs below the trolley so if you've got a short studio a low headroom trolley will save you a foot or two by the time you figure out your hook height so um that's something to, to consider. Now, what I'll do is, is I didn't know when I bought this, I should have bought a, a five ton to start with and not a three ton, but um, I just didn't know that I'd need to go beyond three tons in studio. And for the most part, I haven't. Um, but the 10 ton's really nice to have. It was just a cheap hoist. Uh, I was able to buy it and the trolley for a fraction of the price. That trolley, you know, the, the orange one, boy, 20 years ago, it cost about $2,500 new. And I think I paid about $400-ish for both the trolley and the hoist, including shipping on uh, this one. Uh, it was a lot less expensive. So, uh, 
Well, let's, uh, I'll show you what I got and we'll move on. And here's some of the score of chasing crane parts. Um, was able to buy a six ton, what was advertised as a six ton, and it's a Yale hoist, which means it's a serious hoist. It's not just something Harbor Freight or trolley. That listed as a six ton, but it actually had two six ton trolleys. One was a plain push trolley, this one, and they're gained together with a plate, and then I've already taken the other one off. We'll look at it in a minute. And this other six ton trolley is geared, so you can pull it with a chain, and so you can move stuff very safely. And uh, this was only $200 for this whole setup for both trolleys, which is just crazy cheap. And this is a five ton Harrington hoist with about 20 feet of lift chain, uh, 20 foot capacity. And uh, that was $170. And so that's, that's another really good price. Now, while we were on the road to pick up this, uh, we did some checking on the computer of other local deals just see if there's anything else worth finding and uh there was a surplus company that had fire hose for free they had a, a just pallets and pallets of fire hose that they were they were giving away for free they couldn't sell it um and once fire hose has been decertified you know usually what we have to do is we have to go and uh make nice with the local fire department and then when they get ready to surplus their hose after it ages out of service uh, and get rid of it, we say, hey, could you remember us? And we need a piece of fire hose and whatever. And the older fire hose has got a rubber, a black rubber liner. It, it, you can't see it on these. The ones in the studio, it's easier to see. The newer fire hose has got a some type of a poly, I don't know what it is, but it's it's not the, the thick rubber. They're not as heavy. It's a lighter weight hose. Great for firemen, but, you know, I want this for pads. So I was able to get a couple of fire hoses for me, and I brought home 15 fire hoses for a company that I work with that said, we'll take all you can bring us. And so we loaded up the back of the rig, and I brought them 15 hoses, and they said that ought to do them for the rest of their career. So uh, when you're chasing parts, chasing equipment, you know, looking for deals, you know, it took me a couple of days running and I saved, you know, a lot of money. It's time out of studio, so it cost me money, but I didn't have to make the money to do it. So uh, let's go look at what else we got working. But that turned out to be pretty well where I got my trolleys, hoist, and, and more fire hose for $270. And here's the six-ton geared trolley. Labels here on the other side. Showing that it's a six-ton. Everything's in great shape. And uh, it's got plenty of chain. It's quite typical. This had some spacers welded on. It was on a larger beam. So I had to clip the welds, grind the welds out, take them off, and just face it a little bit. Um, very common for these things to be put together with a big hammer and they flog the end of these pins this bar that goes through here to connect the two ends and the other one if you look when I was talking about the other trolley they beat that one to death and so you have taken dress the ends down to get them sort of straight again so you can get them out and I got these pretty straight but I still had to put them on the shop press on a 30 ton press to press one side out because it just it wasn't gonna happen and it took a lot of work to push it through. So um, it didn't hurt it, but it took, took some time and some lubrication. So that's all cleaned up. They all fit together really nicely and I gotta see what I gotta do to space this. Um, now, uh, I'll tell you, it's the way to buy this stuff affordable is to look people that are selling it that don't really understand what they're selling because he had this listed as a six ton, not a 12 ton. And uh, it should have, it could have brought a lot more money. So, um, but uh, cut off a one inch piece of, well, one by six, cut it off about 10 inches long. Let's see if we can go look at that real quick. And here's where the progress kind of ground to a halt. Um, got a piece of one inch plate, one by six. And I was about a foot long, I think. Clipped an end off of it on the bandsaw, which is why I've got a big bandsaw. 
and uh, finally got my milling machine wired up with the VFD. Now, like I said, I'm not an electrician. And uh, made some progress doing some milling, set it up on the rotary table. We had to make some some T-nuts for that and set it on the rotary table so we can spin it to after we centered it to mill a hole through this and everything's great and took a break for lunch came back and it's dead the fd won't run it i don't understand if it's uh it's probably got to do with me i'm real good at cutting stone i'm not a good electrician and the last thing i want to do is spend all my time studying a book on parameters and hertz and all that other stuff so it was working in the factory default set and seemed to be just fine and then it quit so so we'll take this up to ray but cut a three inch hole for the hook cut a two inch hole for the pin to hang it and these depths are this distance is is adequate it's it's what the other piece from uh that looked like it's got a sticker looks like it's the way yale set it up I'm going to go a little extra on top here to have even more thickness there than what they did. And their plate, uh, I believe, is only three-quarter, five-eighths, seven-eighths. It's not even an inch. So this should be overkill. Should be plenty fine for five tons. And uh, But we'll just have to get it milled out and when Ray's got time, and then we'll hang that crane. Now we're back down here working on clay. Light's a little better now. Can see her a little better. So... Just came over here to do a little bit more. Uh, I heard something today that reminded me of what I'd been taught uh, during my apprenticeship. And I wanted to make sure I said it here. There's a lot of this that's crap. There's a lot of this, like cutting Scotia, really into about art. And it's not what artists do. It's what craftsmen do. Uh, it's what experts do. It's what professionals do. Um, you'll run into people who are professional artists that can produce things on demand. And there's a lot of camps who agrees with, you know, what and who doesn't, and I've got some pretty strong opinions, and other people have got strong opinions too. And you can ask somebody that's got a lot of education in terms of fine art, and they're fine artists, and they just make something whenever they make it, and there's, uh, I've run into a lot of people that disparage what I do, and disparage this, and I, I think that's got a lot to do with um, just, uh, I don't want to say, I don't know, ignorance isn't the word. Um, I think there's some of it that's, that's uh, <laughs> it's real easy to go into a restaurant and criticize the food when you couldn't go back there and boil water or hardly wash the pots correctly. You say, oh, this tastes awful and I'd never, this is horrible and the chef should be fired and string him up and waste a, waste a perfectly good, okay. If you can't do it, you really got to temper. Your expertise only goes about so far. Can anybody have an opinion? You know, just everybody's got an opinion. You know, just like everybody's got something else. Um, what I heard today, I was watching an interview, um, and they were interviewing John Prime just, you know, tremendous songwriter, you know, just when you look at somebody that can put out a first album that has so many, like, unbelievable classics on it, whatever, and he says, yeah, I really, you know, it, I just kind of did it, you know, and he, you know, paraphrasing, he didn't really think he was writing a record for all time, um, but he was talking about his process, because a lot of the song, the music, he said, and he was doing things before he knew how to, uh, how to, what the formal architecture of writing a song was and stuff like that. Um, and he says, you, you get a, you get a good idea, you get a good line, you get a good image or a good, a good metaphor. Um, and then you kind of flush everything out around that. And that's where the craft comes in. 
there's a lot of this that is basic, straightforward craft. And whether you do what I do or whether you just do stuff for fun, um, it's really hard to succeed globally with the entire process if you can't do all of it. Um, and there's a limit on what you what you could claim as your ability. Um, carbon stone is really something. And what my sculptor had talked to me about when I talked about, he said, you've got a gift, okay? You've got a gift and not everybody's got that gift. What he was talking about was the ability to put life into the stone, to take a, take that great idea, like John Prine said, that great example, that great line, that great metaphor, and, and I'll just, then I'll build a song all the way around it. I'll just put everything else to it and we'll work on it until it's right. But that one thing is what really solidifies the entire experience. And, you know, and he's, he's talking about literally music versus noise. When I talk about visual noise, I talk about taking away all that stuff that's, that doesn't sound good, doesn't look good, confuses you. If I can make her look like she's not made out of stone, when you glance at it and go, oh wow, that looks like, I mean, that's like a real face. If I can do that, if I can make these hands look like they're not made out of stone and they're glued right to her body, but like they're just touching, just resting on her, make the fabric look somewhat soft, that's the art of this, of what I'm doing here. Now, this stuff where I get to create something like the butterfly, the hummingbird and, and iris was, you know, blank paper, just make something, and I love it. And you get to do something really cool. Um, and this was, to a certain effect, the same thing. She wanted a full-length full angel, and we went through a bunch of different compositions and designs and ideas of what she sent me and what she wanted that just, they weren't going to fit the project. Let's just put it that way. Um, so I have to bring my craft to task. I have to be able to do this and produce this and make this right. Just like I'm making the scotias and making everything right. The rock pitch is where it needs to be. I'll pol probably polish the top pretty soon because it's t-shirt weather. I mean, I guess global warming one, babe. Whether we did it or whether somebody else did it, it ain't cold. So it probably will wait till I start getting soaked doing that but i'll probably polish that top before i start this this big die and but i've got to put her together in a way that i can find this beautiful figure this elegant face whatever in the stone and present it in a way that you don't immediately look at it and go oh, that's just a whole statue you want to look at it and say wow that's an angel standing there that's even though you know you know it's not it's it's, it's you know, you know it's stone. That's what you've got to strive for. If you're going to be good, you've got to be able to transcend the media. You've got to take this and make this look like it's something that it's not. Uh, one of the biggest compliments I ever got was, was actually a, a, a sort of... Uh, sort of a bit of derision or, or uh, uh, refusion of what I was putting out there. They showed him a picture of a stone I cut and said that's granite. And he says, no, it's not. You can't put a face like that on granite. I already did. I could. I can. That's the difference. Is you need to take somebody that knows the medium I mean, he knew stone. He knows marble. He's a marble sculptor and bronze and everything else. I show him the picture, and he says, nah, that's not. You must have done something. That's not real. You can't do that in stone. I did. <laughs> that's what the gift means. And not everybody has it. Find your gift. Figure out what you can do and do it well. And then along the way, learn how to do all the important stuff that supports that gift it makes that gift really shine because um, everybody can do something that's really cool that other people can't do. And I, maybe it's maybe it's read it. 
an, an electrical manual on how to put a VFD on a, on a milling machine and not go stark raving nuts. I would rather go out and clean the yard with a tweezers than spend all my time doing book stuff like that. Can't stand it. So, art versus craft. Okay. So, I think she's getting pretty close. I'm pretty well ready to be finished. I want to make sure her head's not too big or too small. Just want to be just right. Um, you know, she's life size, supposed to be real. Um, I wanted to age her a little bit from these photographs because these photographs, she looks a little younger than what I've envisioned the angel to look like. And I don't want it to look like there's, I don't mind if the angel is youthful, but I don't want her to look childish. Uh, cherubim, that's not where I'm going for more of a seraphim. I'm going more for a, a young adult, young woman. And so I want to make her look like, you know, she's, that's what she is. So, but anyways, we'll probably wrap this up. I think I'm just about done with her. And uh, so I can sit down and just cut stone, get that scotias wrapped up, and then we'll turn that stone and polish it. I have to move the crane because I got it up in front where we put the stuff on the crane, and then I couldn't get stuff hung. So it just, you know, like I said one thing leads to another. But anyways, my name's Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor here at Carolina Sculpture Studio with the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. Thanks for coming in.